So hi sir. Hi. Uh, welcome to FC after a long time. So I'm not, not sure if you know, but then today happens to be the 14th year of VTV. And it's the anniversary. And if you look at last week, even though your, film is, your new film is releasing this week, you had as many as four of your films releasing in the theatre at the same time. So when, you're, when a work is going on on a new film and three or four of your old films are still playing in the theatre, what, what, is, what does that make you feel? I, honestly, I don't know how it makes me feel. Uh, whatever I say might sound like, oh, okay, I'm being very uh, modest and stuff. But honestly, I don't know. I mean, uh, we, uh, I get some videos from yeah. uh, people in the team. You know, they send me saying, uh, I was talking to somebody yesterday saying, I don't know why people react like that for Angela. Hmm. When we when we composed and recorded and when we filmed the song, honestly with me, I mean, we've spoken before. Yeah. It's not like I know this will work. You know, we'll create this magic in the theater. It's it's never something like that. For me, a film is done. We put in a lot of effort. Everybody puts in the same kind of effort, hmm. I guess. A lot of thought goes into the writing and then from, from the writing to, uh, you know, where, when you start making the film. And then at the edit table, and then finally when you put the film out, it's you, it's like a work of art that's done, hmm. right? And then we wait. Do I wait to see how it does, and you know what what's the kind of response I'm getting, and uh, what's the kind of numbers that it's making? No, I don't. Hmm. But then somewhere, you know, within the airwaves, sort of thing, or some vibe or something like that, you get to know hmm. if it's resoundingly, you know, worked with the with the audience or they've not got it like the way you meant for them to get it and stuff. Mm. I keep thinking with all these, uh, like I was sitting here sometime just before we turned on the camera, I was thinking interviews, all, all these Hollywood films, you know, actors, they don't talk about numbers, they don't talk yeah, about uh, collections. Yeah. It's never done. You, you, you put everything into like Joshua, for example, yeah. and I'm, I'm just going topics no problem, no uh, problem. Know, sir, yeah. Joshua, for example, I know the kind of work that Varun put in. Uh, it's easy to just diss it like that, maybe, mm. and it's it might be just uh, a mindless action film also. But we know the kind of work that went in. We want her to be in that space, right? Now, will it set the box office, uh, you know, fire, counters? Right? I don't know. Right. And honestly, I don't care. And that might seem like a very irresponsible statement to make, but I, frankly, I don't give a damn. Hmm. So, to answer your question, when... Films that released in 2006, 7, and 11, and you know, hmm. Vinaytandi and all that. When it's playing the theaters, you realize that the kind of work that you put in at that time, it's paying off now, and not in terms of the hmm. numbers or how many people are going to watch it, and you know, who was released it is making money. It's not that. It's just that these are this is timeless work of yeah. you know art, and there are many other films also that I'd like to watch, hmm. and I hope all these films come and even at home on OTT platforms, we go and I, I watch a lot of the old films. Mm. Uh, I watched Fish Called Wanda like three days ago. Yeah. I watched Maunaragam like 10 days ago. Mm. I search for a lot of Manisar's films and I watch and uh, you know, Kagas Ke Pool and mm. all that. So for me, these are timeless creations, uh, you know, so every time 10 years later, the film is still playing the theaters, mm. then you know somewhere you, you did something right. That's all it is. Yeah. But other than that, uh, you know, there's not too much thought that goes into it. Um, no, but let's say, let's talk about the single shot. I think at that time, we, I'm obsessed with Varnam Ayram, but then there's a single shot of um, and Surya just walking from darkness into light as he's coming down the stairs and all that. I don't remember noticing that scene so many years ago, but then in the re-release a month ago, you, you see it getting millions of shares. And obviously at that time, it might have been a five second idea, but then when it comes back yeah. to a completely new generation, is there, is, there, is there some sort of a like closure or some sort of a happiness that you get when get, get, get when something like this happens now? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it still means that the writing was in place. It still means that it connects with people of a new generation who are watching it, right? Yeah. I know a lot of young kids who watch the film and who send who put videos out and those videos get shared and all that. So um, it just assures me that that we did the right thing with these films. Hmm. And you can go completely wrong. Like, I think I yeah. went completely wrong with Enero Ki Paim Tota. Hmm. The first half was what I really wanted to make. And the second half was how I want to just finish the film and, and get into the theatre because out. of the, uh, you know, the issues surrounding the film and, uh, you know, lack of dates and all that stuff, right? Hmm. So, 
but it still it was still work it was still like a film that we wanted to make and then we put it out to see whether beyond all this you know whether it will collect and whether people will connect and all that but they didn't and from the first show you can you make out sense it, whether yeah. you watch it in a rohini or whether you watch it in a satyam or anywhere you can sense that you know this is not working so mm. uh, uh yeah i i guess uh, it makes you feel definitely very uh, good that the writing was in place your craft was in place and the shots are if they were noticed at that time they're getting at least noticed yeah. now so sort of thing yeah so i remember quite some while ago i used to the dvd i used to have of kaka kaka wasn't just the regular dvd it was the commentary the director's commentary where you're almost talking as the movie is progressing and i remember certain things that you spoke about your filmmaking process which is super what do you say super uh, spontaneous you know super on the spot all those kinds of things which is probably possible at that time where you're still very what do you say very very new to filmmaking and you know you're not really inhibited like how you might have been after many years uh, now when you reach the sets when you're making a film and like you said in the kind of mindset that you may have been during nnp payam tota uh do you worry about not being able to be present at the moment are you thinking about so many things that you might not be able to completely surrender to that second or that particular scene i think it's the only place that i really come alive it doesn't nothing nothing else nothing. comes it's like meditation and I'm, i'm waiting to film yeah uh, i'm not writing because i know the writing is very banal and it's not really happening hmm. so i'm looking to collaborate and i've had the good fortune of working with a few yeah, really good writers right, yeah. um yeah so i keep you know pegging at um, a few writers to say and asking them to script. you know yeah obviously so that's that's on uh, also because when i'm when i'm writing i know it's not landing anywhere like i and there's a lot of endless i'm uh, just staring at the laptop screen or you know there's nothing on that paper which i have on my desk so i'm not even attempting to hmm. um what is that sir like is is that the first time you're getting that kind of a writers block i think so i think hmm. so there's always been like seriously great flow but after a long time for almost like a two years now i'm i've not been able to write anything unless the material is already like bentani ricardo was a story that was given to me hmm. we discussed it and then jaymon sir wrote a first draft and from then on i started working on it and then i brought my own into it which i also realized that i like really doing hmm. um there was another love story that was uh, written by that's written by reshma hmm. and uh, that script also uh, you know is with me and i've developed that also extensively uh but otherwise it's like you said it's a complete block and not able to move in and i'm not also attempting right now hmm. um i guess it's a scenario that you're in right you you need to be inspired there's absolutely no inspiration in that sense hmm. so i'm revisiting a lot of old films to sort of get inspired maybe uh, a couple of new films uh, you know have inspired me but uh, but i've i've not started writing as yet but i'm waiting to film and i know when i go into sets or uh, a location to film that's when i really come alive and nothing else really matters hmm. after that and there's a lot of discovering so there is a plan there is a, a schedule in place there is writing in place but i still go there to figure out if i can i can discover how the how that film is made in hmm. on that particular day and then i throw away all the plans like the plans are for the ad's and for the executive producer to know that these actors need to be present this equipment needs to be there this is where we're shooting but beyond that it's something that i try and create in that space and i come alive i think the only two places are at my house and probably on and very surely on the sets of a film that i really come alive mm. so uh, whatever you uh, attack me with all that is uh, goes for a toss doesn't affect when you I there when i walk into a set yeah and you could kind of sense it in vtk sir because stylistically your newest kind of a film you know it's very different from the kind of things that you've done obviously there's no voice over i love what you've tried with the songs you know where you're both in yeah. the lyrics and out of the lyrics at the same time so uh, what is happening on that front you know of course you're running from set to set and acting in a lot of movies but is the joy of shooting something that is still something you're learning is that expertise developing every single time you're working on other people's films no like no not at all actually initially when the offers came my way and i was thankful uh, you know the offers came to act in mm. other films and i was able to sort out a lot of uh, uh, you know stuff that was going on uh, with the remuneration i was getting from the acting assignments yeah. and everything uh i also thought that maybe there will be a, a window to learn yes doors yeah. are always opening yeah it's it's always on another filmmaker set and you're still observing there is something to learn but beyond nothing beyond what you already know hmm. 
and sometimes you also know that it's not going the right way sometimes it's not to your sensibilities whether they're good or not hmm. and you want to move away from that so for me I, it's never been an enjoyable process now if you can probably pick a few of the films and think these seem nice hmm. why is he saying that he didn't learn much and i don't mean to be, uh, yeah. be condescending or anything like that towards anybody's work uh, i did have a good time on some of the film sets that i worked on as an actor but largely i don't look forward to it and i'm not really keen on pursuing that extensively hmm. um i'm saying if i don't want to throw a name to some big filmmaker calls me for a role that he feels uh, you know i'm needed uh, in a script then i might probably give it a shot because of his hmm. interest and more than mine so i don't really enjoy it being an actor and i a lot of offers are coming my way and i'm being saying no hmm. there is a theory with a few people on my team who saying let's not push the devey also Mm. uh uh you know very few people get to tread this and that uh you know and let's not really push something that comes our way but it's not an enjoyable process i i yes i get some time to myself to write read and yeah. all that but beyond that i feel i'm wasting my time and i should be on my own sets uh without being egoistic about it i'm just saying yeah. i sh- i feel i should be on my own sets that's yeah. it but so let me put it this way that same situation the kind of roles that you're getting now let's say if you'd started getting 10 years ago don't you think you would have been able to make any kind of movies or the number of movies that you would have wanted to make without any distractions or without any like stoppage or anything of that sort i i don't think uh, see people misunderstand this as being broke and bankrupt it's not that yeah. it's just bad management and uh, you know things going wrong i think in any yeah. person's journey in any field of work there's always a tiny mistake yeah, there's always that yeah. right i think it's only it's, it, this is that it's not even i'm not even saying i think it is that um it's just that we got into a film and we thought we had a plan but then somewhere the plan didn't fall in place mm-hmm. an actor said yes and then you know we had to wait for three more years for the film to start and i was yeah. i still kept you know plodding on pegging at it to see if i can take that film forward something about the story and the idea always you know drew me towards that and uh, and then vikram came on board mm. and then we started filming but somewhere somewhere we went uh, astray so to speak i mean i really don't know what mm. happened and what went wrong and uh, the consequences are because of that right so the film is knocking on the doors of the theaters and it's yeah. it's there and we just need to clear a few more uh, you know uh, sort of uh, legal issues Hurdles. to put it out there and i can see it happening i can see it but i'm just now completely just waiting to see that it gets a proper release good theaters and you know some good promotions going and people coming to the theaters to see the mm. film because we need that but that's all it is i mean um, so i don't and there were a few offers that came my way even then but i was never for it when these from 2019 onwards when the offers came i felt the need for that money mm. um i i thought this film is stuck and nobody's willing to put further money into that film so this will help me yeah finish that film so whatever money i had made with the acting assignments i put it back into dhruva shatram and i completed the film mm. it needed about 30% more to be completed you know uh, given the finishing touches cg you know and the whole right up to sensor which i got mm. done with whatever acting i was doing so that helped me and i'm grateful mm. then now i don't see the need to knock on continue uh, yeah yeah I still get a call a day there is a call to yeah. I, mean, I don't think there's been a bad performance of yours as an actor right <laughs> I I don't know about that that <laughs> might be debatable <laughs> okay some people might say uh, you know that I'm doing the same thing but that's the okay. idea right I can understand SJ Surya he's he's on screen and he and when you talk to him you know he's driven by that mm. he wants those interesting roles like I I discuss a script with him he said let's do this film mm. it's a remake but let's pick up the rights and do it and it was fascinating for him for me to see uh you know him talking about that particular film and then how he can play that actor's uh, you know part so interestingly differently well and all that stuff mm. so he's driven by that um uh, and i like that but i'm not mm. i'm not driven uh, you know to act i i, I don't think i will be also mm. so but so because of that i mm. get what comes my way and i say okay to it and i'm a complete director's actor like on vetri sets i did exactly what vetri wanted me to do I tried a few things but he would say illa gautam idu venda ninga andha mari irukatom idu idu idella neenga theriringa adu venda so he directed me completely on certain other sets in malayalam and all i when i acted in a couple of films they said lesser sir 
நீங்க எப்படி பண்ணுவீங்க அதே மாதிரி பண்ணுவாங்க சோ ஐ டோன்ட் தே வாண்ட் யூ யா தே வாண்ட் மீ சோ you know yeah. but tell me about this situation sir like dhruva natchatram i mean we had booked tickets right it, it's a movie that we had decided to go and watch it's a movie that we've been watching on we've been waiting on for so many years or uh, what did you what is the emotional toll of a film getting so close to the release and then getting pulled back in the last moment what does it do to you as a as a director as a, as a creative person it was heartbreaking and uh, there was this restlessness restlessness in me that really got my family worried uh, so uh, for example my team my closest people who are my team and my wife who especially my wife who's never been on a film set who's never worried about my side of work she she made a point to just be with me for for 20 25 days because she could see that there was something really um, you know not right mm. uh, sleepless it, nights things like that yeah meaning yeah there was complete restlessness and uh, i could feel once one hollow sinking feeling completely all the time you know and i wanted to desperately was trying to get out but i couldn't travel i couldn't write because i had to i had to sit here and face the backlash from a few people because the film had released also right more money was invested for the film to release mm. and we had to answer for a that, few more yeah. people in that sense they were added on to the list of you know all the existing investors and all that so it was uh, it was a nightmare and uh, but today i'm sitting and talking to you a film of mine is releasing in a few days and uh, i'm looking forward to that yeah right so that's uh, that seemed like a nice outlet to to latch on to initially i was thinking maybe dhrushtram should come before joshua, joshua but then i understood when the producer told me that he has to release a film we finished this almost a year ago all work was done uh, you know and then he quickly censored the film and he said let's put it out so i'm with the film and it is my film it's something that i've created so that seems like something i'm holding on to and uh, a few people that i met and a few people around me have sort of taken Support care of you. that but it was it was not easy at all yeah, yeah. but what is this process so you're, you're of course you have a, another career you're acting in so many movies all that is happening on one side and you have to constantly you have this constantly in the back of the mind that oh there is a huge film like joshua that's there there's another huge film like dhruva chandran that's there so every time you go back home or you open your laptop and you see footage or you see script pages scripts pages or whatever what is going through your mind you know is it easy to just snap back into the world of that film or does it always look like a huge like burden that's on your shoulders no but that's the only thing that takes us away from everything else like today i i know i'm not feeling maybe great but then if i had to watch half an hour of something that of the rachatra mohan joshua it'll take my mind off everything else mm. i'm transported into that world that we've created and the world of film itself uh, which completely drives me more than anything else in this world so um, looking at rushes and that's why i'm 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 itching to shoot something like that's why shooting a music video you know sets me on fire in in a, in a good way i'm saying i yeah. i love to do that some people might say why do you do this you know but i i, I just want to shoot yeah. like i'm actually setting up to shoot something over the next 4 5 days and i'm really it's a it's a song i'm looking forward it's a 5 minute song we'll shoot for a day but i'm so looking forward because i know i'll be calling action and i know i'll be in my space and i'll forget a lot more uh, of things that i want to forget and all that so, yeah. yeah and i mean i don't think anybody's made as many movies as you did during covid right uh, yeah. if not a yeah. full length movie you did yeah. so much work during covid yes, and it just kind of, of yeah. uh, but has it has it has it always been the case for you do you always kind of look at filmmaking as some sort of an escape some sort of a, a a happy place where you're you're kind of distracted from everything else that's going on yeah. or was it is it a newer phenomenon no no you said it right from hmm. the beginning it was that um from my engineering days you know i was so not sure what i was doing i was uh, obviously there was an opportunity to work in an autocad sort of a, hmm. a firm and marketing and there were talks of uh somehow clearing engineering writing toefl like which i did uh i gave my gre and then looking to uh, study abroad and all that so we didn't have any money but we were figuring out hmm. so that whole process bogged me down i was thinking oh no this is, i could clearly see at 21 itself that this is not me and then at 22 23 somewhere trying to get work but at the same time trying to figure out if family is okay with what hmm. i'm doing and you know trying to look for work but then a half day at least spending time outside money sir's office hmm. uh barada sir's office uh you know kamal sir's office this is the three offices that I would go to very very regularly and constantly because i knew that would 
that would really keep me mm. you know and bring you back yeah, you know, like make seriously. you feel and, and i kept trying and i somehow landed a film with rajiv sir and mm. uh, minsara kanu happened and from that moment onwards i i know there was no looking back because i i really thought i'd found my space mm. i really thought i'd found myself see that 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 search to find yourself is still going on mm. meaning now i want to see if i can write something and take it international mm. film something and release it as an english film so and these are all avenues that come up when things are a little crazy for you here you know and i know i'm i can i can do that i know a lot of filmmakers here who should actually be out there mm. making international films but we're all maybe happy in our comfort zone so to speak it's not comfort zone at all filming but i'm just saying within that mm. so i'm really looking to take off and there are lots of i'm meeting a few people and all that looking to see if i can get away but that is a get away that is escape to still see if i can still do mm. something and that will take me away from the turmoil that i'm as in my head hmm. so that is my uh, it's my solace it's my escape for sure hmm. but i know that i know that you don't um, i think even in our conversations before you've told me many times that you don't really believe in regret and all those kind of things yeah. but isn't there a way that you could have maybe just kept yourself to be the filmmaker and given everything else to somebody else like somebody you trust and let them take care of all the other logistical problems that come with filmmaking and for you to just be the filmmaker that you are i did that you tried that i did that all the time yeah now i'm not doing that now it's only me so is that is now better i think so okay i did that from the word go i was always handing it over to somebody so that i can only focus on make taking that one shot hmm. and taking those 25 shots a day i was only worried, i was only focusing on that and i let people handle who i and i'm still say i don't blame anybody but then the question is why don't you take care of this why don't you also oversee that why don't you why don't you sign on those papers hmm. why don't you let everybody handle everything so then how, i can't answer this and that right hmm. so today i feel i'm in a good space where i know what the problems are i'm not blind to that i'm not oblivious to that hmm. and i know how I, i'm trying to see how i can overcome what yeah. was happening by myself so that's what i'm doing yeah so but usually let's say uh, we write something okay we write a, a paragraph or or a particular piece and then we look back at that paragraph 3 uh, years later or 2 years later uh, we can look back at that that and think that okay there's something dated about this or i don't think this way anymore does something similar in that way happen to not just your scripts but also the films that you thought about and you wanted to make 4 years ago or each time you go back are you finding that you you're still connecting to what you thought about that at that time yeah i think i'm still connecting to anything that's been written all your material that i have like dn dhruva chitram was set up in 2014 as 14. an idea yeah it was developed with surya and then vikram came on board in 2017 we started filming i'm seeing it today and it, and i'm not promoting the film here on the show yeah but it doesn't seem outdated to me it doesn't and that's a big worry also yeah. like distributors coming and people talking are saying and arnalu 2017 film la sir so but the first comment is it doesn't look a day older than yeah, right and now i i don't I, i'll i'll say it myself if i felt that yeah. like i feel minnale could be right kaka kaka is not varnamayaram is not vinaythandi is not they are timeless you're saying more yeah. timeless yeah, yeah. but minnale I, is i i can't revisit minnale so much it, because, why sir because i still i feel you know i've i've moved beyond the 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 ideology of the way i shot that film and what was in that film and all that. the politics of it things like everything, that everything yeah. including the way we filmed it technically and otherwise and all that so i it's one film i've never revisited after that oh i didn't know this okay. yeah yeah i've never watched it hmm. like obviously sitting at home on raj tv there might be a clip or two that plays hmm. uh you know and uh, somebody might say something and i might just watch it and then i'll move out but i watched kaka kaka i watched varna mayaram i watched vinay tandi in the theaters again i went and watched so but minimally something i have not revisited but some material that i have written 4 years ago 6 years ago i still hold on to it i'm still looking to see if i can film it i'm expanding on some of the writing from earlier hmm. and of course there are so, there are lots of new ideas lots of one pages which i haven't touched in one and a half years and expanded on but they're all there for me to take forward hmm. yeah so i don't feel these are dated or um, uh, you know they belong to some other generation and hmm. people don't connect to it if hmm. i feel that I'll definitely not touch it, and I don't feel that at all. Hmm. So. so, but what exactly is Joshua? Sir, I think even if you look at Twitter, there are people st- st- who still think Joshua's 
I think an updated version of Johan or you know like a version of that film is something that you had pitched many years ago and it's just a, 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 a movie that is now set in Chennai but then should have been set abroad and all those kinds of things. Is there something that you can tell us about Joshua and the, the idea that went behind it? No, it's not Johan for sure. Okay. And there's no updated version of Johan because Johan is a really out there updated version by itself. But both characters are assassins. Yeah, okay. so that's a might not be the right word for uh, Joshua. Huh. In my He's more like a protector. He's a contract killer, so okay. to speak. Okay. And then he becomes this for a certain reason. He becomes a close protection unit head. And there is a girl that he needs to protect. And does she get to where she needs to get to at the end of the film? Yeah. And it's driven by a series of um, action sequences that take this girl from one place to the other. Hmm. That's Joshua in action. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with... Uh, Yohan Adhyaya Mundru that I wanted to make with uh, Vijay at some point. Hmm. But at least when you look back at the movies that you had kind of pitched, you know, Chennai Lurie Maria Kalam, so many of your movies we were all movies that we were super excited about at that point, right? Is there any, any, what do you say? When you look back at those movies, do you feel like, I wish I had made it, that movie at that time, it would have changed my career, you know? Or it would have been so much fun to make that movie at that point in time. Is there any one movie like that? The one that, the Jesse of your movies? No, I, I like, there's, I think this falls under the umbrella of no regrets yeah. and stuff. So there's nothing like, oh, this film would have changed my career. I'm pretty happy. And I think this four years has taught me so much more uh, that I know the next 10 years will be so much better, for sure. Hmm. Um, I'm not going to goof up anymore with the decisions that I made in the last seven, eight years. But in terms of, um, as a film, there's nothing that I think I missed out on. Like, I know I didn't get an opportunity to take that film with Vijay forward, hmm. but there are no regrets at all because I know that script will get made at some point with a younger hero maybe. Hmm. And it might be a very international film, which at that point Vijay didn't see it yeah. as, you know. And, oh, maybe he felt it was too international for me to make it into a Tamil film is what he said hmm. at that point. Today, it's really opened up, right? In that sense, films have become pan-Indian. Films are looking international and all that. A story doesn't necessarily have to be rooted in Tamil Nadu or Chennai to be a Tamil film. I'm hmm. You could still make a Tamil film, but the characters could speak Tamil completely set in a in a foreign land. And that's yeah. what uh, Johan was about at that point. Yeah. So, to, uh, to answer your question, Michelle, there's nothing like I regret this film have of not course, yeah. not you know having been made or anything like that so far. Yeah. No. The decisions that I regret are all purely management based decisions. And, uh, you know, um, uh, selling revenues of your films, hmm. agreeing to sell off things on your film much earlier and and then not handling a few investors really well. Hmm. And I should probably handle them myself and not letting things get to court. Correct. And once things get to court, then your corporates sort of back off from picking up, you know, the acquisition and rights of the films. And, and that sort of is sitting me, is, is uh, has led me to sit here wondering when this film is going to release. So those are the decisions that I that I regret having not mm -hmm. made or made. Yeah. yeah. So again, uh, I, I saw the trailer of Joshua and then of course, you've got that, it, it's become like almost like a theme where you cut according to like the, 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 the gunshot or the punch or the slap or something like that. I think it's your second or third film where you've done that. It's almost become a part of your style. And even, it's been so many years. So we've been watching your films for like more than 20 years. And just by the way you see Varun ride the bike, you know that it's your film. And it's something you admire. What is it that when you look at the films of other directors, you know, so many other directors, celebrated guys who have been making movies now, why isn't it that they are not able to create a style or a signature like you were able to so organically right from your first film? Is there some secret? Is it is it just about like not overthinking it and just being yourself, like expressing on the, on the sets? Thank you. But um, some people might say I'm getting repetitive and... Uh, but then these even are the moments, parody is a is a is a is these are battery, moments right? in his films that you know are always there and they look at it even like that. Frankly, this and that doesn't bother me, and it's it's what you said. There's never too much thought that goes into okay, we did that there, so let's do that. That's here. not that's, even the fighting against it. You don't do. Right? Yeah, okay. I don't do that. Yeah. I don't do that. I just go with the flow of what I feel. Like I really thought BTK when the Tanidhar Kadu was completely away from yeah, yeah. how I have technically filmed. Uh, you know, a, a film. Hmm. Um, I, I put a lot of work into trying to make it look as different from the earlier work of mine. But you will still see those tropes, so you might still see a touch here and there, like you, like hmm. the lyrics, yeah. lip syncing and not. Yeah. 
Yeah. And certain other moments come very... So it's not like I remember, I mean, Manipaya or anything like that straight away. If something rankles me, yes, then I might not do it. But then I thought I, this moment needs that. Mm -hmm. These two people on the terrace of a, you know, a chawl like building, they mm -hmm. will be in this space. And this is how they will react is what I thought, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and that's how it was done. I remember asking Mani sir, sir, I, I, because he watched the film. Mm -hmm. And he said a few things to me. And I asked him, did that song bother you like in a gangster sort of a film? a musical treatment of a of a scene did that mm. bother he said no I love songs I'm not complaining about that he mm. said so I realized that you know that's what I did right I mm. love songs I like telling stories lyrically mm. and musically that's why I did that Undan Anishadam song and I shot yeah. it that way but three four times when I watched the film in the theatre there was some section of the audience which was a bit restless in that song and there was some talking and stuff so I felt maybe you know that uh, a, a set of the audience might not really grab mm. uh Everything that you do. Yeah. So, but And so I was okay with that. I still feel VTK didn't get the recognition that I thought it will get, mm. honestly. Um, I, you know, so... Um, yeah, there's not... Uh, there's never a plan. There's only a plan for the EP. Mm. And there's only a plan for the producer. But I don't go in with a plan. Yeah. But then, what about you? So, you know, so, most, so many of the celebrated songs of our childhood and our teenage years are like songs from your movies. So when the world is moving against film music and all that... Is it something that you will consider? Like, of course, I know you've done Nadu Nisinagal and all that, but will you ever think of a time where you are completely fighting your instinct for music and movies? So a couple of the scripts that I've had access to and what I'm working on, one with Jay Monsoor has given me, and one of the love stories that I'm working on, I've tried to pull out the songs. But why? <laughs> I've tried because of this whole concept that today, you know, a lot it's of the films like, that are coming yeah. out, there's no musically driven scenes and, you know, it's all straight out there and all that. But I figured, and what I was going to tell you is, I felt the need for this part of the story to be told musically. Hmm. So I was not able to do that. It's not the love for the composers that I'm working hmm. with and the love for the music, which plays later on my players and you know, on my phone, which I always listen to and hmm. as a go-back to every day and all. It's not just that. Neither in Purvasandam was indulgence. I really wanted to work with Raja sir and I gave everything to it. A couple of songs... Uh, and a, a charanam and all would have been extra only because I wanted more of his music in the film, right? But I've not done that ever since. And today, because of the way, like even your question sort of pertain, leads yeah, towards because, that, yeah, right? the youngsters I've tried like to it, see yeah. if this can be done without, but then I've always felt that uh, this this needs a song, this needs lyrical treatment, this needs hmm. musical treatment. So. Yeah, but then tell me about this. So like because we spoke about Nadunasi, uh, today's like 14 years of VTV, okay? And you're at that time pretty much the hottest director in town. Everybody wants to work with you. You could have made any film <laughs> in India at that time. Why did you choose to make a movie like Nadunasi right after that? Not, that doesn't mean I'm against that movie or I dislike that movie. No, that's, so, that's, that's really okay. See, it's yeah. a genre film, right? There's yeah, only people who like that genre yeah. uh, will watch a film like that, right? Like I don't watch horror. Correct, yeah. It might be like, I know a couple of films recently might be like really big horror films and big hits and all, but some, it's not a genre that I enjoy. Mm. So I don't watch it. So like that, I know Nadunasi is very, very niche in that sense. Really, only very few people will connect to a film like that. Yeah. Somebody who likes a genre of that kind, right? So, but then there was no thought that why should I make this film? I had the story and I felt technically also we should treat a film like this without any background score and only, you know, completely pulsating uh, soundtrack, which is like sound effects and all that. Hmm. And a story that really drew me into that world. I didn't think twice at all about it. But going into release, I, I and we spent very little on that film. Hmm. And going to release, limited screens and all that. And we thought it might just, you know, break through. But on the contrary, there was a lot of adverse uh, comments and reactions, especially from why after VTV this film hmm. and all that. That's when I start also started realizing that there is a sort of an image and there is uh, one baggage that you've sort of carried as a filmmaker that affects your next film. Mm. And they go into the theatres remembering moments or sort of lineage of your, you know, your work, right? Yeah. And then that affects the viewing of this particular film, which is unfortunate though. Mm. Like when I watched Killers of Flamu, Flamu. right? It's cautiously written all over it. Mm. But it, and when those f moments of the gunshots and the killings come, no, that's Scorsese for sure. Mm. The rest of the film is like some of the filmmakers yeah, yeah. made it, right? Mm. 
but then that like is, is your earlier question also that those connects of the filmmaker will always be there i think hmm. and sometimes that's bane also it's not really uh, a blessing hmm. i feel yeah but then when you go on and make a movie like geeta ne which you know how much i love that movie uh when you make a movie like that and that doesn't get the reception that you thought and it's pretty much in the same zone as vtv right uh what is that kind of do to you did, did did that confuse you yeah not confuse it affects you that's all you yeah. put everything into it it's work and it's passion and you it goes out there with the music and everything and then i had people telling me the music didn't work for us uh you know a lot of um, uh could have been lot more contemporary than that little touch mm. of what raja sir classic yeah, yeah you know yeah. normally would do and all that but i was completely in love with the man and i wanted i wanted that kind of music to come through and a lot of discussion that went into recording of the songs and all and yeah. i completely loved it um somebody else said that if it was simbu instead of jeeva but i really mm. thought we were really worked well with jeeva and i really like jeeva and it's a film that a lot of people revisited later i think it's it's i don't know sometimes i believe in you know one golden hour mm. time there's one destiny to every film how it connects with uh, you know people more of the people more the magic in the theaters all that works i think sometimes it's just taken away from you not that the film doesn't have it you you're not given that moment that's all i think it is hmm. but at least at that time was there any major concern because you just made a a super hit album with btv and at that time of course like like exactly the decision that you had to make a movie like nadu nisi nayagal did people think of it as an indulgent in the sense that you want to work with ile raja sir because you could have again made another movie with brahman sir or harris sir or whoever oh. did the market look at it like a like like weirdly no i don't think so i think uh, purely in terms of numbers it was picked up by uh, a big music label for yeah. a for a big price yeah. um as the audio launch function was an amazing it was huge yeah, yeah. the entire industry was there yeah. and uh, that song those songs brought the audience to the theaters lots of people said they loved the songs also yeah I and I see I I made the film I put everything together I love the music in the film and I love the work see the process also is very important right the journey is very important hmm. where you reach yes is but then the whole 8 10 months of working with raja sir working with the actors samantha jeeva the way we put that film together it was filmed as a bilingual with the another set of actors in telugu yeah of course it was a great uh, experience see I initially for that project I had wanted to work with rahman sir and we we were waiting for yeah. rahman sir to give us dates but he told me very clearly that it will be probably a year later from now and i won't be able to sit him and he was really really busy at that time mm. and i had this script and i don't want to wait and i thought this is a great moment for me to bring in raja sir and very hastily i approached him mm. thinking he won't say yes but he immediately said yes come let's start work you know so i really loved every minute of that film mm. and it was indulgence yeah i'm saying it myself <laughs> So of course now we have to talk about Joshua a little bit. Uh it's a movie that I think you started shooting in 2019, right? Yeah. And yeah. uh you had a set of particular set of delays because of covid. Uh when you when you release it now and when you kind of get back to shooting parts of it again, did you have to make any major changes like you've had to make in other films? Yes. I think in that sense only Inenoki Pam Tota had to be changed reworked because I didn't get Dhanush's dates like the way I wanted to. there was a sort of a fallout that happened between the producer and dhanush at that point and uh, when dhanush came back i had wanted a certain number of dates but he was not able to accommodate because of his other work and everything so i had to rework a lot of stuff and i changed what i had earlier written and shot the rest of the film in like 8 to 10 days as opposed to 25 to 30 days right and uh, with joshua and dhruva shatram there were no changes to uh the screenplay or the script as to and from when i started to how i finished the film there were no changes at all yeah we had problems we had management issues funds coming in all that with dhuvna chitram then you know with josh but there was nothing like that hmm. the producer is rock solid and uh, from the beginning he knew we were making an experimental film hmm. i started with an idea of a love story and then just by spending some time with varun we did a couple of screen tests and you know uh, audition sort of look tests and all that I told him this one 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 full on action film will really work. We sent him abroad for like 3 weeks of training and all that. That really worked also because he got one hmm. one one agility and one fluidity to him yeah. to his to his body language, right? And that helped me shoot design those action sequences. 
the producer clearly it was it was an experimental sort of an action film hmm. and we didn't want to go with any big stars or any big actors also because of you know we wanted to finish the it subjects, in one stretch yeah, so yeah. who was available within that we figured out krishna was of course he's a hero and he's doing hmm. many films but i asked him to play this sort of a negative, negative role in the film and he said yes immediately if, if it's you on board i'm doing it he said and he was there so um, and then covid happened so we had to stop just after covid we picked up the film and then there were masks all over the place that didn't work for the screen play so we had to wait for some more time and all that but other than that there were no changes to the story i mm. shot what i wanted to shoot mm. is there something that you enjoyed about shooting a movie without any major stars because see i want to work with the big actors okay. i want to work with the big stars uh, there's no two ways about that and if some people and if i also feel sometimes it might be difficult to get them to say yes to a lot of things you have to work around a lot of things i'm ready to do that because that's work hmm. and i'm passionate about my work and i'll do anything to get that done so that's not a problem at all hmm. but this particular film i completely enjoyed because there were actors who were willing to go that extra mile with everything that you were giving them hmm. jump and they were jumping <laughs> seriously there were no body doubles and i'm saying this and uh, it might not be a big thing to a lot of people but to me it was a huge thing because the camera didn't have to hide and shoot the actor right yeah, we yeah. could put it full on there and and grab what we were doing yeah, yeah absolutely and uh, there was very less rope removal also other than some really dangerous stuff that you know varun had to do and for him to be safe other than he was doing everything himself hmm. of course we had a good set of uh, fight coordinators and an action directors who were on board who made sure everything was safe and all that hmm. in spite of that there were cuts and injuries and So there was a lot of work that went in at the same time we were trying to make sure everything was okay but still in spite of that almost 3/4 of the film Varun is without any footwear in the film hmm. because he's on the run yeah and suddenly you realize we realize that he doesn't he's on the run and he's on the run so there's no footwear hmm. so we decided okay let we'll have to continue with that Varun said yeah I'll do it so everywhere he was shooting running across any sort of terrain there was no footwear hmm. and we were filming him like that right so uh, I completely enjoyed this process of working with non stars so to speak hmm. um who or also actors who didn't have airs about themselves and who were ready to do anything for the film hmm. yeah so let me just end with a few quick questions five or six quick questions i just want to uh, see what you have to say about the just like fun lighter questions sure, sure. uh let me start with this okay sir uh what when somebody comes to you and tells you about which movie like they are a fan of your movies and which particular movie when they tell you do you feel the happiest varanamayiram vinne thandi varuvaya for sure hmm why ah uh, varanamayiram i think it's very obvious okay. it's a uh, personal personal connect and still emotional about it and all that vinne thandi varuvaya because i've got that a lot yeah. like extensively so if somebody that doesn't say vinne thandi varuvaya i'll be really surprised yeah why not yeah and uh, of course people have come up and said minnale that bothers me kaka kaka actually nobody calls it a favorite film although they hmm. they talk about surya a lot in that film yeah and oh surya was like the surya was like that and all that uh so that doesn't surprise me mm. uh but i've got vinithandi varuvaya and varanamayiram like the most nidane when i tell you about nidane i'll add to the list of 10 12 people who said that <laughs> <laughs> okay sir so what is your uh, favorite malayalam movie my favorite malayalam movie i think would be recently kumlangi nights kumlangi mahesh and pratigaram uh tondi mudalum drupsakshi that film Hmm. Um yeah. Hmm. Recently from recently yeah. Okay. Uh your favorite Manisha film? Nayagan. Nayagan. Okay, I thought you were going to say Manisha film. Nayagan. Nayagan. Yeah. Okay. Uh one film, no it doesn't have to be your film, but one film you regret not making. Nayagan. Nayagan. Okay. <laughs> Should have changed the question. Okay sir. Five quick questions. Favorite Raja song? I think it will be Uruvugal Thorukade. Okay. Somewhere I keep going back to that. Yuvan huh. song. Yuvan yen yen kadal sulle ne. Oh, okay. That song, yeah. Okay. Uh, Rahman song. Rahman would be minna uh, leeni vanda deena. And can you take us back to the that first day or that first couple of hours when you listen to Vasikara for the first time? When I was Where was it? Uh, at the studio. Yeah. Like I. we had there was a little bit of a dichotomy that we were going through it was it was a song on reema sen and we bombay jayshree's voice hmm. 
lyrics, of course, we composed the tune. I thought the tune was, it really struck a chord. And then Tamare came in with the lyrics. It was, it was my almost my first or second interaction with Tamare. Hmm. And a um, lot of lyrics, like she writes a lot, right? So from that, pick and choose and then fix it. And then Harris does something to uh, the lyrics. Like he, he adds a little more, uh, sort of a, this should be easily sung. Hmm. Uh, it should recollect and all that stuff. So then again, a little more filtering of the lyrics happened. And then we decided Bombay Jeshi would sing the song, right? It was Harris's call. So while she was recording, I was like, this is not going to work hmm. on screen because it's Reema Sen whom I'm going to film on. Hmm. But then somewhere while the song, we finished recording itself, I was very, very sure hmm. that even if it doesn't work, the song has to be we Bombay Jeshi was, I'm going to pull it out. Hmm. And strangely, I wasn't able to film it the way I yeah. wanted to. Minnale, we didn't get uh, Only three days. and Reema together. Mm. We had to bring in dancers, which is not part of the original song uh, description itself. So that was a disaster for me. And that's one song that I want to somehow get the rights mm. for and shoot, and shoot it, again. it again. But um, that was the first time I listened to Vasigra. And what I was trying to tell you is, I didn't want Bombay Jashree on Reema Sen. Mm. But once she sung fully and when I listened to it, I decide even if it doesn't work on screen or not, I'm going to have this song in my mm. uh, What was the tune or what was the meeting that kind of led you to believe that, okay, I'm going to introduce this guy and this guy is going to score music for my so, first movie? Honestly, it was an introduction because he'd already started work on a film called Majnu. Majnu, right? correct. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I had done an ad film uh, for Kumudam with Harris. Uh, uh, Raj Shekhar, the cinematographer, yeah, and myself, it, we'd yeah. worked on a Kumudam ad film and Harris did the music for that. And that interaction in the studio... And the way he was um, recording, his, uh, his his talking about the sound, uh, the output of the the sound itself, right? The song itself, all that kind of drove me into you know uh, a sort of a world. Hmm. I, I realized that this guy is uh, you know, something, else. something else for sure. Then an interaction with Dr. Murli, who was a producer of the film, and I was trying to recommend Harris very, and there was talk of Rama hmm. sir and all that, and I was trying to bring in uh, Harris, and when Doctor suddenly said. Actually, I've recorded with a new composer. I've got a song. You want to listen to it? He told you? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I said, yeah. And mm. he said, uh, this is from a film that I'm going to make. And then Mercury Mele, yeah, yeah, yeah. that song he played. And I, I really liked that. It was the first time I was listening to the song. I didn't hear it in Harris' studio. Whereas in Harris' studio, while working on Kumudam, we'd actually talked about a lot of songs and he had played some stuff for me and all that. So Mercury Mele made it seal it for me because doctor was recommending somebody whom I was going to talk about. Anyway, and I said, yeah. this is the same person that I also was talking about. We just worked together on a film. Adiye, uh, uh, was the first song we composed. Hmm. And when you worked on DN, did you get back to that same old I think with Harris, it's, yeah, with, it's always that. Even if there's no connect, I mean, we're friends, the family knows hmm. each other and all that. Families know each other. Uh, so whenever even we get back to work, even after a film or two films, it's always back to sort of square one in a good way. Mm -hmm. uh, we really vibe well and it's it's purely work with a lot of discussion, a lot of talking about work, song, he'll play, you know, and then he'll play multiple instruments, he'll go from here, he'll go there, he'll, re he'll ask me to record it and then as he's playing, the tune will sort of waft through the air and I'll pick on something and he'll keep looking at me. So it's the same mm -hmm. thing that happened in Mindalee that happened even on DN when he watched the film and composed the songs. Mm -hmm. so, so what is your favourite Harris song? It doesn't have, it shouldn't be from your film. Oh, it shouldn't be yeah. from my film? Okay. I like... Uh, uh, Suttu Viri Chudare. Oh, amazing song. Yeah, I love that song. And then I like um, the Lesa Lesa songs also okay. a lot. Yeah. Something from not, something that's not my... Correct. Book, yeah. Of course, sir. Thank you so much for doing this, sir. Looking forward to Joshua. Thank you, Usha. Yeah. Actually, I'm talking after a very long time. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. did one set of promotional I know. discussions at that time and then after that we just went really quiet. So it was nice to talk to you. Yeah, of course, always a pleasure. Thank you.